Warning, what you're about to see is not recommended. Wheelin' Wednesday is not a cruelty-free product, and we do not recommend that anyone try this at home. And welcome back, everybody. Welcome back to Wheelin' Wednesday. Oh, I'm sorry, welcome back to Wheelin' Wednesday, where once again, the wheels, we don't even know if they sleep. Are they that which never slumbers? We don't know. What we do know is that sometimes, on a Wednesday, the wheels, they choose violence. And it's tough, really, to imagine choosing something more violent than sending Junkbot through the nine. Because Junkbot is the vehicle that sprouted from a from the comments, we're going to get quite a few graphic inserts in here today. From the comments where someone said, hey, build a rig out of only the worst parts. And I said, challenge accepted. <laughs> so he sits before you there, Junkbot, those not familiar, SCX-102 chassis. There's nothing specifically wrong with that, except this is an Amazon clone of a 102 chassis that is as thin as paper. The C channels, you can literally bend them with your hands. Holding them, uh, holding the axles, which are Red Cat Everest slash Gen 7 Pro axles, which are awful. The ring gear carrier inside the axle is plastic. The drive shafts slop around in them. And because this came from an Everest, it is four-wheel steer locked into two-wheel steer with the biggest, the state fair winning size pumpkins. Power is provided by a Reedy SC480X, the worst crawling speed control in the world. And then it is feeding power into the Reedy Crawler 540, the torqueless wonder of the world. Tires are fake Pitbull Rock Beast XLs in the gripless compound, and they are crammed onto narrow 2.2 wheels because it is virtually impossible to get these tires to mount to a 1.9 wheel because they have effectively no inner lip to catch the beadlock ring. The compound is made out of something that if it was on a shoe, you would fall down every time you tried to place your foot on the ground. And the servo is a spectrum stock from something Axial gives us. It has effectively no torque, but it kind of almost works because it is mounted servo on axle. Did I also mention that holding those axles off the ground are the RC four wheel drive King dual spring shocks, inarguably the worst shocks that we've ever tested because with the option spring pack, which is in place on them, these were sent in by a channel, uh, uh, a subscriber, member, viewer, that said, I want to see if you think these are the worst shocks in the world. And indeed they are. They are filled with differential oil. I wanna say they have 7,000 CST in the front and 5,000 CST in the rear, and they still leak. They will leak diff oil. Also, all of the option springs, none of the springs work. It's the lightest springs, both ends all the way around. They go up to like, I don't know, like seven or eight pounds. And yes, I know that if you have two springs stacked on top of each other, they the rate halves, but you have like seven pound springs. So if you put two of them together, it's still three and a half pounds and nobody's running a three and a half pound spring. So Junkbot is going to have to try to navigate his way through the nine and there's no chance in hell that we can successfully do a single run at this. So I think what we're gonna do is there are nine gates and we're going to see if he can even get through them. So we've kind of determined that this gate here is gate one. Oh, yes, I would, uh, we should point out the, the radio is a Spectrum DX3, which has atrocious trigger feel and uh, wheel feel. There's way too much spring return. And honestly, when I talk about the feel, it's <laughs> about how I expected we'd begin. When I talk about the feel of a radio, this trigger, despite not being attached to anything physically, feels mushy. I had to flip that over so I can tell you that the servo is a Spectrum S614.
You kind of have to drive it like a bouncer because there's no grip, there's no drag brake. This is gate one, which is arguably one of the one of the easier gates to get through. You have to apply a, an insane amount of throttle. Low speed control is virtually non-existent. Every inch. What do you what do you think we lost? Did we break it or did something fall off? And the answer is astonishingly neither. The slipper nut had backed all the way off. Ah yes, the the gearbox is the Amazon gearbox with the alloy gearbox, the red and graphite with the metric ton of slop in it. There's about the steering angle one can expect from those Gen 7 Pro axles. It is terrible in every conceivable way. <laughs> there's no, there's, there's, there's no grip in this thing at all. And it is fitted with, I should point out, the smallest pinion that will fit on the gearbox. And still has far, far too much wheel speed. Wheel speed to the point that are, if you, if you indeed are successful in self-writing it, it will more often than not just flip back onto its roof again. I don't want anyone to think that, that the suffering here is from excessive wheel speed. When, when, uh, when I state that these tires have no grip and this vehicle has no drag brake, we'll let go of the... One would suspect that I had drag brake turned off. No, no. The Reedy Crawler has no drag, has very, very little drag brake in the 550 and none in the 540. It is a terrible motor. Okay, but... I mean, we popped it at the end due to an inability to hold. But, and ordinarily, when you get through a spot, you're, you're, you let go of the trigger, right? You're, because it's gonna hold it. There you go. You, you have to get it someplace where you can be held in place mechanically. Like there needs to be, you have to wheel chalk yourself on the course. I'm wondering if we can't and then the pumpkins are so inexcusably massive that you hang up on you hang up on everything. We're gonna Oh look at look at this! Look at this! I think he cleared that. He might have hit it a little, but I ain't even care. So I, I, we're through two gates. The rear pumpkin. That's that. That seems about right. Honestly, it's it's the no drag brake that is as much of a problem as anything. That's not true. The fact that the axles will catch on anything. You can see there in the rear, at ride height, the clearance under the pumpkin is 13, 14 millimeters. Uh, it's like driving a pan car out here. The CG is terrible. So when it lands, it lands upside down. The absolute lap. Look at that rear tire. 
I, I'm, I'm trying to, exa ooh! Holy crap, that almost looked like traction. This is, this is no reverse. Oh, you know what? I'll take it. I'll take, come on, <laughs> points. Like, you know what? We're, we're gonna do a score out of nine. Uh, I don't care if he hits them. If he can just get through them, I'm gonna give him a point. I think he's, I think he's made three of these. And that's where Junkbot really shows his strengths. Like, everything is a, is a three-point turn. You can't, <laughs> he, he, doesn't, he doesn't have a turning circle. He has the turning orbit. Uh, there's, there's no turn to these axles at all. Okay, all right. I'll take it. I'll take it. I, uh, I'm gonna give him four for four. It it is not just not pretty. It is it is ugly. <laughs> the, the the pumpkins and the, the, the <laughs> low speed control. I'm sorry. What? No, it doesn't have that. It's like a gearbox where first and second gear are broken, so you have to start off in third. So you have enough torque to do it, but you're, like, right there? I'm I have to pull the trigger so far. The tires have no lateral grip. Okay, all right. Saw it. Look, look at this. Half a point. <laughs> half a point for the gate. Additional half a point for sticking the landing. He's five for five. Oh. No. <laughs> like what? Like what are we doing? Listen to the sound of that. The mellifluous tones of that gear. Look at that. Look at that rear pumpkin. It's so big. I think I figured it out. Was that clean? That might have been clean. We might have actually cleared that gate. All right, let's see, let's see what we got. We got a... I'm gonna get out through there. You can kind of power drift it to, to get the turning circle in a little tighter. Oh. <laughs> hey, come on. Oh, no, no, sir. No, sir. Both axles have got to pass through the gate. Try, try to get up a little higher, Chief. Yeah, there you go. There you go. There you go. Hook that lip. Um, you know what? This is a new thing. Like, right? Do we need like a Gambler 500 style, like build the absolute crap fest of a rig and just see if you can actually do it? Right, so here's, here's eight and nine, and I have no idea how to approach eight. He was, he was starting to look a little bossy. Then you get in that, oh, come on, come on, come on, come <laughs> on. I experienced some glee watching that marker just whee, spin around like a compass. Has his slipper been loose the whole time and we just needed to lock that biz out? This is one of those things. Intentionally built with junk. 
you can see, like, there's not much to a rock crawler. Like, if we just, and this applies to Red Cat in, in, in all the guises of Red Cat that I have tested, whether that be the Wendigo, the Gen 7, or the Everest, that is the limit of my experience. But in the experience in those vehicles, all you need to do, and it's like the joke they make about Jeep owners, right? A Jeep is a hyper-capable off-road vehicle. All you need to do is replace all the suspension, the motor, the tires, the wheels, you know, etc. That's Red Cat, right? Everything I've experienced, if you get rid of the gearbox and the chassis and the axles, it's pretty good. And the tires and the wheels and all the RTR electronics, if you just get rid of that stuff, it's pretty good. So what we've done is we've put a lot of that RTR stuff here. Look at it go. Oh man. And like I say, it... hey, when it falls, it's on its roof. I don't know why. The body doesn't weigh much of anything. We're gonna, we're gonna we'll give one more dig at it from this side, uh, and then I'll, I'll try, I'll try looping it around the top. Wait, what if we go real high? The servo, what am I doing? The servo does not have enough torque. Look at the speed. A $5 servo from Amazon has more torque than this servo. I don't, I, like, we can't count that. The rear axle didn't pass. All right, so we'll, we'll just do this in, in reverse. So look at this one. He's eight for eight, man. <laughs> Almost nailed the tripod there. The turning circle is so, it's so bad. It's so bad. That's full lock. What, what do we got? Do we have 30 degrees of steering angle on these axles? You have to use all available beans. This burrito is not bean rice and cheese. It is not bean and cheese. It's just beans. That's all that is in the junk bot burrito. It's a tortilla with beans on the inside because it is what you must apply. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Like it's upside down every time. We give him we give we give him one more thrust at this. I was close. So it's so it's that's the thing. This is Tommy Wiseau's The Room. This is a, a list of other movies from the 80s, 90s, and early 2000s. It's so bad it comes back around and then it's good again. You can't not have fun with Junk Bot because my hand is sweating so bad. Not just that the like there's no texture on the grip right here. It feels exactly the same all the way around, so you just sweat because you're basically just gripping a tube of plastic. The, the wheel feel is so bad. Everything about it is so bad. Oh, and I, I left out the best part. So the, the 480X has no power switch. It's one of those where as soon as you plug it in, it's on. This thing will sometimes take, so you turn the radio on first, and then you plug your battery in, and sometimes it will take 30 seconds before the speed control goes beep and the radio syncs up. Like you think it's broken. Like you're trying to steer it and you're pulling the throttle and nothing's happening. And then all of a sudden it goes beep and then it's it's ready to go. So this, this, this particular electronic setup, once it's in use, like I don't unplug the battery until the video is done. I don't turn anything off because it might not turn on again. Yes, and technically this thing should have an ISDT ESC70 in it because no one buys an SC480X, no one. They come in your RTR and you're stuck with it and you put any other speed control in and you're like, whoa, so this is how other people live? And I mean like you could put a 1040 in there and be like, ooh, this is better. And then if somebody puts a 1080 G2 in there, you'd go, what have I been doing with my life? So he is eight out of nine. He's nine out of nine, man. 
every time upside down. So I misspoke a little earlier when I said that he's running the absolute smallest pinion. He might be able to go down a tooth. He's running 1887, which is pretty much kind of the bog standard for what you're gonna see coming on a three gear gearbox. That's the stock gearing for a stealth. That sort of spur to pinion ratio is super common. We see it a lot. So with an 1887 and the basically the electronics that come out of a Bushido, I wanna say has the 540. Like the Ecto has the 550. No, the 540 comes in the Enduro SE. So this is basically the stock electronics from the SE. The stock servo from like an RTR Capra or any number of axials. It's not overwhelmingly fast. It's probably in that like seven mile an hour range but it's too fast and let's go let's go the low crawl let's center it up we'll try we'll try to go as slow as we can all right full lock it's the worst turning circle you've ever seen right what would you, <laughs> what would you guess that is 10 feet 11 feet uh, all right, so I can see the outline of the circle in the dirt. Here we are. Okay, top of the circle. Oh, yeah. We're looking at a... I would say that's maybe a seven-foot circle to the other side. So for whatever reason, we're getting a fair bit more steering that way than that way. And I can't tell if it's something that's hitting. Honestly, when I do this, it looks like it steers a hair more that way than this way. But we don't, uh, we, we don't have any ability to, like, this is a DX3. So we can't, we can't adjust any of that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> We're just stuck with it. We can adjust steering trim and throttle trim. And does he track straight? Let's see. He actually pulls a little bit to the side that he has worse steering on. It's, it's inexplicable. Oh, look at... Oh, hey! I can't... But you, you see the concentric circles just moving off to the side. Oh, what a, what a collaboration of noises. The junk bot. I would go so far as to say that he went nine for nine on the nine. And if we were scoring it, oh my God. <laughs> like... A decent score around here when it was still the 6 slash the 7 was basically anything under 50 on standard canyon scoring, which is 10 points for a rollover, 7 points for a gate strike, uh, 2 points for a reverse. If you can pull a score at or below 50, you're doing well. This guy... <laughs> well, he would have gate maxed, like, every gate. So I'm thinking... The, the maximum, I'm not thinking, this is a, this is an objective truth. The maximum score on the nine is 153. Because we institute what here what's called a gate max, which is we take a combination of the three scorable offenses, because a perfect score is a zero. We don't give scale points, none of that. A perfect score is a zero. So what we do is we make it to where 17 points is a gate max. That is a rollover and a gate strike. So it's 17. So if you do 17 times 9, uh, 9 times 10 is 90, 9 times 7 is 63, add them together, 153. I would say close. <laughs> Very close. Um, probably in the like 125 range. But we knew when the wheels were like, take junk button. We, 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 this is not a thing. 
Like we 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 can't we can't score that. We could anybody who watched really close, you can go back. You know the scoring. You can determine and he didn't run him in any sort of order unless that is the order. The order wasn't bad, really. That order wasn't bad with the yellow orange as gate 1. Anyway, Junkbot had a good time. I had a good time. I hope you all had a good time. Uh, Junkbot, what a guy. What a goer. Um, sometimes, indeed, the whole can be more than the sum of its parts because the sum of his parts, his parts are all crap. I think the only thing he has nice is that chopped up J-Concept's body, which is no longer nice. And uh, he's got, I, I want to say that's a cut down front bumper from a 10-3 on there. Those are some nice bits. Other than that, ugh. It's amazing how fun he is for what he's made out of. So please do, everyone, uh, drop me a comment below. Like, subscribe, consider channel membership, consider picking yourself up a channel, uh, a Crawler Canyon t-shirt or hoodie or what have you. Did I ask you to comment below? If I didn't, and I, if I did, I'll ask you again. Please do comment below. We'd love to hear from you here in the comments. We'd love to see you here in the canyon. We look forward to seeing you next time. We hope that between now and when we see you again, you one and all, do your very best to have a good one, everybody. We are going to uh, we're going to wrap it up right here with Junkbot. What a guy! Here's the thing: you want to talk about the perfection of imperfection? He's made out of crap, but what a good time! We'll see you next time, everybody. Awesome.